and welcome to Learning at LASM. My name is Beth. My name is Haley. And we would like to welcome you to join us in... Learning at LASM, Spice Up the Watercolor. Today we will be learning how to make watercolors using food coloring and spices that we find in our pantry. We will also learn about natural pH indicators and how they can affect color. To begin, you will need something with small wells, such as an ice cube tray, paint brushes, food coloring, spices, baking soda, flour, and paper, preferably watercolor paper if you have it. After raiding my pantry, I decided to use paprika, smoked paprika, turmeric, ground thyme, coffee, raspberries mixed with flour, raspberries mixed with baking soda, blackberries mixed with flour, and blackberries mixed with baking soda. For the food coloring recipe, use one tablespoon of baking soda, one tablespoon of water, and five to eight drops of food coloring. For the spice recipe, I mixed half a teaspoon of spice with a quarter teaspoon of baking soda and two teaspoons of water. However, for the blackberries and the raspberries, I also mixed a separate portion with flour as opposed to baking soda. The berries acted very differently though, depending on what I used. If I used the baking soda or the flour. Can you guys think about why that is? Haley, can you think of why that might be? Well, it turns out blackberries and raspberries are natural pH indicators. Other foods such as cabbage, beets, and turmeric also act as natural pH indicators. pH is a way of talking about if something is acidic, neutral, or basic, and is measured on a scale of 1 to 14. Liquids below 7 are acids, 7 is neutral, and liquids above 7 are bases. Haley, how did you know all that science about pH? I learned a lot about this subject in BASF's Kids Lab during the Fun Factor experiment. That's fun spelled P-H-U-N. Today we are painting the LASM ampersand. The ampersand is an and symbol. For us, it also symbolizes the connection between art and science. We are also sharing with you our paintings of Jason the Triceratops, who is on loan from Raising Canes and the Graves family. Now that we know how to make our paints and the science behind how they work, let's start creating. Haley, do you ever stop to wonder about the history of paint? Did you know that watercolor painting is extremely old? With similar methods being used, in the cave paintings of Paleolithic Europe and has been used in manuscript illustration since at least ancient Egyptian times, but it was especially used in the European Middle Ages. Wow, I had no idea that watercolors dated that far back. Yes, also watercolor paint consists of four principal ingredients, pigment, gum arabic as a binder to hold the pigment in suspension, additives like glycerin, ox gall, honey, and preservatives to, al to alter the viscosity, and water as a solvent used to thin or dilute the paint for application. While we paint, Beth, can you tell me a little more about the history of color? I did read an interesting fact recently that relates to what we are experiencing today. In 1665, the plague arrived in London, and the whole city closed down. It shut down all their fairs, traffic, school, and universities. One of the students that got sent home was the one and only Isaac Newton. He had nothing to do at home alone in his room, except that his room became the center of the expansion of human knowledge. Through his play with prisms that he purchased at a fair, he began to make discoveries that led to his theories later produced in a book called Optics. Due to these discoveries, artists would be confronted with the idea about the active role of the brain in the formation of colors, and how colors are just effects created by the world inside of our heads. So, Isaac Newton worked with art and science? 
And as a young boy, he was making scientific discoveries. I wonder if any of our learners will discover something during their time at home. What have you discovered lately? Haley, your artwork reminds me of a piece that we have in the LASM collection. It's a painting that was created by Charles Birchfield in 1948. At first, it may look dreary, but if you look closely, you will see the shoots growing from the ground and a red cardinal on a branch. Mr. Birchfield was actually showing us that spring was coming. Wow, that's a beautiful painting. You know, I learned today that saffron is the most expensive spice in the world. It can be used to make red food coloring. In medieval manuscripts, saffron was mixed with egg white to replace expensive gold coloring. Did you know that Queen Cleopatra loved the color purpura, what we now call purple? More than 250,000 murex brindaris and murex trunculus shellfish were needed to extract half an ounce of dye, just enough for a single toga. There we go, our ampersands are done. If you would like to try your hand at painting, we will have these as coloring sheets that we are working on in the link below. Thank you so much to all who have donated to support virtual-lasm.org. If you would like to support the future creation of content like this, visit lasm.org and click the donate button. If you donate $25 or more, you'll receive a special LASM ampersand cloth face mask. For the chance to be featured on our social media for the hashtag show me Sunday, share your creations with us by tagging us in your pictures on social media. You can also direct message us or email us at LASM at LASM.org. Thank you for joining us today for learning at LASM Spicing Up Watercolor. What a fun way to investigate the art, science, and the chemistry of color. Thanks for joining us. Bye!